Good morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning. <laughs> Hi, Marie. Okay, let me add you to the stream here. Ah, Marie, so we're live. Okay. <laughs> so you know. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Okay. So um, there's a little bit of a delay. Hey, Amy. So, and and you can't see the comments. Okay. <laughs> it's all that you need to know. So we'll have a conversation and it shows up like 20 seconds later. Um, so yeah. So there, okay. So people are just starting to join <laughs> and let's see, I see Amy so far. If you're joining us live, say hello in the comments. Hi, 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 hi. Good morning. Good morning. Marie, do you have your coffee? I have my <laughs> I have my water. Yes. Oh, that's so meeting, right? <laughs> this is my double meeting. Double meeting cup. <laughs> CBA people will know. Yes, they'll get it. <laughs> you have to join to find out the secret. <laughs> <laughs> you have to join if you really want to get to know the Marie. <laughs> hello, hello. Okay, so we have lots of people joining us. So Marie, I am so excited that you are here today. And the name of your interview, let me just double check because I'm just forgetting everything this morning. Find accountability and be consistent. <laughs> That's right. So Marie is our accountability queen in Clutter Boss Academy. And she has used accountability, consistency, and to both tackle her clutter and motivate many, many, many other people. So Marie, I'd love if you would just introduce yourself and share a little bit about <laughs> you and clutter. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, my name is Marie Farley and um, I'm a wife and mom of three young adults, ages 20, 22, and 24, which is a whole nother story. So <laughs> um, especially during this time, um, I live just north of Dallas uh, in Richardson um, with my very supportive husband. And um, basically my life has been cluttered forever. And now that we know it's all clutter, I guess all of our lives have been, <laughs> but my life has been really cluttered, um, my space for a really long time. And every year for like, for probably for the last 25 years, one of my new year's resolutions has been declutter the house. And without any tools, any skills, it didn't happen. So, um, back during kind of the beginning of, of this whole lockdown, you know, stuff with COVID, I saw an ad, uh, one of Jess's ads on Facebook and we all see a million ads. I've never clicked on one because I'm like, oh, then I'll just get, you know, spam and stuff. So I never click on them. I don't know what drew me to it, but something drew me to it. Well, I do know it was God, but, um, you know, God knew that I needed needed this in my life. Little did I know when I clicked on that and, jo and joined boot camp on Thursday <laughs> that my dad would die on Saturday and and then boot camp started on Monday. And so, um, whew, OK, um, so I almost didn't even join. I almost didn't even show up, even though for me, the fact that I had clicked on it and paid for it and knew that I needed it. Um, I just felt like God was saying, just do this. You need this. And, and so I did, I don't think I said a word <laughs> during boot camp. I, I was just like, I will, I will be there. I will be at everything. I will participate hundred percent, but I really didn't, I wasn't in a place to talk and that was perfectly fine. No one made me talk. No one tried to encourage me to talk. Um, but I loved it. I, I got so many tools that I could use to start getting stuff out of my house. And for the first time ever, I believed that I could declutter my house. And and I had tried, believe me, <laughs> I had tried on my own a million times. I'd move stuff from box to box with no idea what to do. And so I now have the tools to do it. It's just, it's going to take a while. <laughs> it didn't, it didn't get this way overnight. It's not going to get fixed overnight. And, and that was something I really needed to hear too. Cause I think before I thought, Oh, I'll, I'll tackle this for the weekend and my house will miraculously be, you know, done. That, we're, we're sold that idea. Like that's, that's we are. Like, like that comes from big box stores and other people who don't understand clutter. I mean, we're sold the idea that this is an overnight thing that we're going to solve. Right. Right. So boot camp was was huge for me. So I try to get on the boot camps, you know, anytime she she has them. I try to do them again, um, just to for an extra little boost. But CBA was the best investment that I've ever made in my life um, in me. And I, you know, it was it was an investment, and you know, and I knew that I was about to embark on um, 
cleaning my dad's home and and he was 94 had a lifetime you know it, it i knew it was going to be difficult because i knew most of the stuff that was left was was memorabilia type stuff so i knew that it was going to be hard and old me would have just put it all in a storage unit and and or thrown it in my garage and just been done with it i've gotten rid of probably 90 percent of the stuff that wasn't furniture we did get just just approved us getting a storage unit for the furniture just because my kids are all about to get apartments and so that was a little bit unique situation but i wouldn't have done it if they were six eight and ten you know i wouldn't have stayed it for that this, it's we talk through like what would make sense right and right. storage units are a tool that we use for a short period of time and so marie really thought about it put a timeline on it put a budget on it and that's, I mean, that's making a, a, a well thought out conscious decision about getting a storage unit, whereas most people get storage units and then end up having them for 10 years and spend, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> thousands, tens of thousands of dollars on storage units. So, Right. And, and surprisingly, <laughs> we had never had one. I mean, the age I am and the fact that we live in clutter, you would have thought at some point in my life, I would have said, ah, let's just throw it all in. But we're also pretty conscientious with our money. So we wouldn't have done that. You know, we didn't want to spend extra money to get a place to store, which we, we all, we always knew a lot of it was extraneous. We just didn't know. I was never taught to, to, to do the flow out. I, I just thought I have a big enough house. We can just, you know, move stuff to the side and closets and pack everything full. And that means we fit in our space, right? It's all here. I mean, it fits, <laughs> but it's not pleasant. It's not fun. It, it, you know, and just as I've done project after project after project, every one of them has improved my quality of life. You know, we did our, our bathroom. Well, someday I will have an after video and I promise you're going to just be blown away because, <laughs> and I still kind of live in it. So right now it's not like, <laughs> really, Wait, didn't, really you something, you had, didn't you have something funny in your bathroom? Oh yeah. I had a bathtub full <laughs> of, of Taekwondo equipment. The, the bathtub well, had a crack. In it. We weren't using it. Yes, it was like which we didn't even remember was there until we buried got down several feet. And I was looking at pictures. Take before pictures. Promise, just do it. I didn't want to do it either. I went around. In fact, I think I was crying when I was taking the pictures because I was like, "This is ridiculous how bad it's gotten." But as you do the projects, you're going to want to see what it was like. Whether you ever show anyone, it doesn't matter. You know, and some of those pictures may not make my video. <laughs> I may not share, but you know, but I, but I hope I do because I think it can be inspirational to people to see that that you don't you don't know what's inside people's homes. Like people that know me outside wouldn't. I don't think they'd believe it because I'm very organized at work. I'm very organized. You know, I you would not think <laughs> that I was living this way. But I I you put I just had blinders on. It was I didn't see it. It just it's got to be that you're saying this, Marie, because I'm still editing Jen's video, which is like <laughs> <laughs> tomorrow morning we're premiering it. <laughs> but she says the same exact thing. You just put blinders onto it. I mean, like, because you have no. And the other thing that she brings up in her video is she tried a bunch of other programs and professional help before finding Clutter Boot Camp. It was Boot Camp then Clutter Foundations now. Mm -hmm. But when you constantly fail, fail, right, at other programs, you start to feel like you're alone and this is your own issue and that it's much bigger than just clutter. Like you must have some other thing going on. So you get stuck in this like failure loop where you start, instead of realizing that, oh no, I just never learned how to do this. You're like, I must be the problem. That's horrible. <laughs> right, right, right. Exactly. So, um, yeah, so I'm very glad I took before pictures. I've gone back and looked at them several times as I've now cleaned, like there's nothing in my in my bathtub, even though we can't use it. It's not a storage area. So I had to real it, you know, the whole like floor space isn't storage space was huge because I was like, well then what is it if it's not I mean, we had boxes everywhere and I was like, sure, we can store stuff there. That's a clear, you know, floor space. And it didn't even dawn on me to to try to have the mindset that floor space isn't storage space. Cause I was like, of course it's storage space. You put boxes, you have, you have an area to put boxes. So let's put boxes there. The problem is they grow and grow and grow until you just have this mound, you know, and then stuff just starts getting tossed on it. You know, it just, it, it's just, it's, it snowballs. So now that I'm trying 
to not put anything on the floor, you know, and our closet is so much better. I'm, I'm still getting rid of stuff from my closet. And now things don't even touch. Sometimes it's like amazing before I couldn't even use it. It was so crammed. And now I can actually put something in and I've even tested, can I put it in without touching another piece of clothing, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and it's, it's fun and it's fun putting your shoes on a rack. You know, it's like, you know where they are. If you put them there every night, you know where they are. So getting ready in the mornings becomes so much easier. Um, just everything, you know, cleaning out some cabinets in the kitchen just to make more room. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <An odd. laughs> yeah, uh, okay. Um, you know, cleaning out every, everything you do like that just makes it a little bit better. And then you realize, oh, things aren't falling on me out of my Tupperware cabinet, or I can actually put the, the cups away instead of trying to make room, you know, hoping one doesn't fall out on me and break, you know, it, it just changes everything, you know, changes everything. I remember the day, Marie, that you cleared off or the weekend that you cleared off the, um, the counters in your kitchen on your islands. And you were like, I can make a sandwich now. Yes. <laughs> yes. Simple stuff, you know, because before you really had to find the spot, you know, and now anybody can go in and cook and, and, and I've tried, you know, my kids are, like I said, young adults and we really, oh my goodness. My <laughs> um, An informal interview and all pets are welcome. Here we go. Hey there. <laughs> um, yeah. So, yeah. So now we can, we can, um, make sandwiches, <laughs> make sandwiches. We can, we can do whatever. And because it's clean, you see when someone leaves something there and you're like, eh, that doesn't belong there. Get that off of there. You know, we're trying, if we are notorious and have been forever for, if there's a, if there's a clear space, it gets stuff put on it. It's a dry, it becomes a drop zone. And so, um, you know, it's, it's gotten better. You know, now when I see stuff there, it's obvious and it gets moved, you know, it's like, put that away, take it upstairs, whatever. But I'll say my young adults never really learned that, you know? And so yeah. now they're home. And so they are learning it. And I was just so. thinking that's a really good point that you bring up. It's, I mean, cause so many people are like, well, they say the word lazy, which I hate, but if you're just putting something down and there's a whole bunch of other stuff, it's not even obvious that it needs to get put away. There's no, I mean, like, I never believe that anyone is lazy because there's lots of proof to the contrary, having nothing to do with clutter or your house. Right. But yeah, if you put something onto a cluttered table, it just becomes part of the clutter. You don't differentiate it. So exactly. Really exactly. So um, after, after, oh, boot camp, after boot camp, I decided I was going to do Clutter Boss Academy and, you know, and, and really prayed a lot about that because, because I felt like I had the tools now. I was like, well, do I really need this, these people? Because, because I didn't participate, I didn't like have a huge connection to these people yet because I just chose not to, uh, to participate, but I saw what they did and I saw how encouraging they were and, and they were encouraging to me too. You know, I, I saw that it was the kind of thing that I thought I needed to, to have accountability and to have just some people and they are my people. Like they are. I mean, I, I can now say that, that it was such a great decision um, because they will be supportive and it's, and it is truly a, a, a no judgment zone. I mean, none that they, they want to help you. They've probably been there. They're probably still there with you. You know, so we, you know, if you, if you throw out a problem, somebody will try to help. You know, it may not be the solution that fits you, but you, you'll have some choices. <laughs> so, you know, yeah. I love that. But I knew when I first start, started CBA and, and got all the stuff that I needed more accountability. And so Jess is like, what do you need? And, and immediately she was like, I'll t tag me or, you know, and people were like, let's tag each other. And now, even today, you know, nine months later, I'm still tagging people if I make a post or they're tagging me. And so that we're accountable, accountable to each other. Cause I knew I needed, cause I think a week went by, I started in May of 2020. And then it was like Memorial Day weekend. And that first week was our first week. And I was like, we don't have to post pictures of our, of our little, I hated County, first of all. So that's why I started the box thing. I, I, I do a box a day, no matter what. It's basically a banker size box. And I do one every single day. And because I felt like if I could get that volume of stuff out of my house every day, eventually, It'll be emptier. <laughs> okay. So here, let me stop you here for a second. Right. So 
Um, one thing that I noticed working with a lot of clients is, you know, I talk a lot about shopping and bringing stuff in and that contributes to clutter, but there's definitely the case. And Marie, this is 100% the case for you where there's never been any outflow. So it's not never. necessarily that you're bringing in a lot of stuff. It's that you've never, ever, ever had anything flowing out. So it's just been accumulating. So when it comes to accountability, there's just different methods that work for people. And Marie knows herself really well. <laughs> She knows what type of accountability works for her. And she knows that consistency is something that moves her forward. I think, Marie, you had like a perfect attendance record, right? I, well. <laughs> I love streaks. I don't want to break them. You know, it's like if I get a streak going, I, I want to keep it going because it, it just it's motivating to me, you know. So so Marie, we we kind of figured out that for Marie. <clears throat> I think when we started the month of June, Marie said, I'm going to do one box a day for the month of June and right. I'm going to post it every day because that would help me stay accountable, which may not work for other people, may work for other people, may, may not. But for Marie, she thought that she could do it. So we have a daily check-in thread in Clutter Boss Academy and every single day, Marie would post her picture of her box. And I think the first month you actually did five, five boxes. boxes a day because I made my family do it. You know, they were all living here because they were all back from college. They'd all gotten back and they were being lazy. You know, it was like, uh, uh, you're going to get in this with me. And 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 they've they've been very supportive. They're, you know, they're young adults and, you know, don't always want to do what mom says. But I said, I need you to do this for me. I, I, it can be for you later. But for right now, I'm starting this. I need you to do this for me. I want to I want to get rid of five boxes a day. Every person is family has so much stuff. And I said, it's going to be easy, guys. You've got, you've got clothes from middle school. Bring it down here. You know, right there. <laughs> I was like, you have stuff from your childhood. <laughs> like, just bring it down. You, and, and at first they were, you know, the first few days they were okay. And then they were like, it's hard. It's hard. I'm like, just ask, does it fit your life now? Does it still, is it still something that you would ever, ever, ever use or wear? And if the answer is no, let's get rid of it. You know, and they were like, okay, you know, very hesitant. But every day I'd say, just put it on the stairs and I'll get it. And I'll, and I'll go and make my picture. You know, <laughs> I said, just, just put it. I gave them each a box. They put it on the stairs, you know, and every now and then I'd have to say, I haven't got your box yet. You know, I've got to make my post, you know, and now it's just a joke at my house. Have you made your post yet? Cause we're getting ready to watch a show. And it's like, have you made your post yet? Cause it takes <laughs> about 10 minutes. Cause I sort all the pic, you know, I, it's, it just takes a little bit of time, you know, mainly cause I'm scrolling Facebook too, but you know, um, Anyways, so for that month, I did ended up with 150 boxes because in 30 days, 100, yeah, 30 days, 150. Yes, boxes. yes, yes. So the big reveal with but, those, but then it didn't stop. So then Marie kept going. She was yes. like, "This is working." <laughs> right. Thing I want to do another month. So then you did right. another month of one month. I kept telling myself it's just another month. It's just another month. It, but now it's forever. It's until my house is perfect is the way I want it you know it's never gonna be perfect like just says it's we have to keep declutter we have because life happens we still bring stuff in I will tell you for a fact though the flow has stopped I mean I only bring in just this almost nothing I bring I I don't buy stuff I mean and, and I, I I will say I guess I wasn't really a shopaholic it's just that Amazon is so enticing it's right there on your phone you're sure, oh that's a cute I'm a gadget person and so if if it's gadgety and new and you know, electronic, -y. you know, I, I love that kind of stuff. And, and my husband's a, an engineer, so he, he doesn't mind <laughs> if I do, you know what I mean? He doesn't mind that kind of stuff. He kind of thinks it's cool too. But I was like, we have so much stuff we have. Yeah, anyway. So I just stopped. Right. I was like, it has to stop. So in the comments, guess how many boxes Maria's got. You could probably do the math, but <laughs> <laughs> how many boxes, how many boxes has Marie gotten out of her house and every single day has posted a picture. And even when Marie was like, I need to take a little break. She would fill up some boxes before her break. <laughs> and you said I needed to take a break. And you I, right. did. I, told you. I didn't say it. I was like, I can't say it, but you did. And you made me. So yeah, I, I made her take a break for three days <laughs> just to like, just relax. <laughs> Sometimes your coach is like, you got to stop. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it was good for me to hear that. And it was good for me to do that. You know. You um, ready? Okay. Hold on. Well, hold, there's that, that little whole delay thing. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
post your, your number in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> Candy says the Marie box a day is what clicked for me. Consistency, consistency and accountability has been key for me too. I'm so thankful she started this. So now Candy is posting her box. Yes. And she, and we started again last night because she's I'm <laughs> tagging her. And so it's, it's, she's, she's been sick. So she's back. So <laughs> Yay, we're, yes. we're, we're glad you're feeling better, Candy. Yes. Okay, we have one guest so far of 500. That comes from Emily. Okay. Emily, she says over how much time? So it was June, July, August, September, October, November, December, and almost all of January now. So eight months. Lonnie says 150. It was 150 in the first month, Lonnie. That so was good. <laughs> All right, are we ready for the big reveal? I'm gonna do the drum roll. Sam said 250. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I just want to teach my trumpet lesson, so it's right here. <laughs> um, 356 at least. Wait, wait, um, say it again. I, I totally interrupted you. <laughs> 356 at least. And that's from June till now. I did a bunch in May, but. 356. Yeah, it's very exciting. 356 boxes of stuff in yeah. a half a year basically 356 boxes that's incredible marie yeah like if somebody told you in may when you joined clutter boss academy that in january we'd be having an interview and you would share that you've got like 400 boxes to talk about <laughs> what would you have thought then I, no way i, I would have just <laughs> thought there's no way you know I, I didn't have the confidence in myself i you know i've changed you know and i wouldn't have done an interview like this either I wouldn't have. I would have said, nope, do somebody else. You know, I just, I, it wouldn't have interested me at all. I, I wasn't in that mindset at all. Um, so, Marie, yeah. so can, you it's about, can you talk about how Clutter Boss Academy has impacted other areas of your life? I mean, sure. like you, said, you wouldn't have had the confidence to do the interview. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Um, well, I'm, I'm a band director and there's a lot of extra stuff when you're a band director. Um, I happen to be, um, more like a an adjunct person so they pay me by the hour and they were asking more and more and more of, of me and and i'm a i will do it I, I i will do what's needed and i started realizing you know i'm doing a lot of extra stuff and i'm not really getting paid for it because they're only paying me for the classroom hours and i was like i really need to stand up and say i need to be paid for this um so i went in and and, and i stood up for myself and i said you know it, I know there may not be budget to pay me for the things that, it, that you had me do. Um, can I just take, can I just have Mondays as comp days and take Mondays off because I, I'm the assistant. So there's another person there teaching and they were like, yeah, let's do that. So I now have most of my Mondays off. I go in sometimes because we've got a concert or something coming up and I don't want to miss, but it's up to me <laughs> if I go on a Monday. And so I would have never done that. I would have never, ever, ever done that. And, and even now I'm, I'm debating whether to retire or, go in and say, I'm willing to work two days a week because that's what I would love to do. I love band directing and I love being with the kids. It's very different now with COVID, but um, I do really, really love it. And so I'm, I'm trying to figure out, you know, how to work that. But the fact that I'm even thinking of asking that before I would have just been, I quit, you know, I'm, or not quit. I, I retire and I, I don't, I don't, cause they're not going to do anything. I would have just assumed they wouldn't do anything. But now I'm like, if they, if they would like me to come in and teach a couple of days, I'm willing to do that. So it, it, so, it feels very I mean, empowering. Well, right. So how, like, how do you think that clearing clutter and working in Clutter Boss Academy is empowering? Like, what's the connection there? Can you articulate that at all? Well, for one thing, I feel successful every day. Like, I, I don't feel like, because I did feel lazy and like, what's wrong with me? Why can't I do this? And, and you know, and now that I have the tools to do it, I, I see it that I'm not lazy and that I'm doing it. I, I'm I'm doing it. And so it, it just makes me feel valuable, even though I know I've 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 done a lot of stuff with um mindset and you are enough and I know that that I'm gods and I, I feel very confident in in who I am, but I never felt confident in my abilities to be a homemaker like like why can't i keep this house clean i can do it at work you know but i can't do it here and and and, it, and i now know i did not have i didn't have the tools i didn't have the skills i didn't have the knowledge and now that i do i'm seeing progress and i'm seeing prog and that's why for me i needed to do it every day i needed to get a box out every day i needed to see the daily progress because i just told myself 
eventually it'll get it'll get clearer and it and it has it, it even though i think 356 boxes have left my house how can there be anything left I, <laughs> I it is what it is and i and i know that i will continue and i'm and i'm actually and i've tried to get even more than that out you know um and i've gotten rid of big things like a, be, a bed you know oh, yeah. you're just big stuff, so. right maria has gotten rid of she i mean you've gotten rid of a bunch of other stuff also right 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 um yeah so I just think it, it empowers you to, to do something for yourself. And this is, this was really for me. I mean, I, my family is benefiting from it, but I did it for me. I did it because I wanted to make our home a pleasant, relaxing, joyful place that wasn't just cluttered and embarrassing. And, you know, I wanted my kids to be able to bring their friends home, you know, and shortly into clutter boss, my daughter brought her boyfriend in <laughs> before that. Why we, they just, all, you know, everybody did stuff out and, and, it, and surprisingly, I wasn't freaked out about it. You know, I was like, okay, yeah, okay. You know, and now he's here all the time, <laughs> but you know, <laughs> which is, which is fine, you know, and he's seeing the progress too, you know, I mean, it's he's nice. learned some mad skills also. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, okay. There was a question that came up. So, uh, somebody is asking, where did all of the boxes go? Most of them went to Goodwill just because that was the place that was open in our town. I've had, I've also done, um, donationtown.org. Is that the one? I, I think that's the name. It, the, Google donation town. And if there's a place in your area, you'll be able to put your zip code in and see if they pick up in your area. I've done that too. And the veterans and, um, an animal shelter, different places that have little thrift shops pick stuff up. They pick stuff up. If I can get stuff picked up, I like to do that. But where they go every day is to my garage. And then every weekend they go in my car and we take them to either Goodwill or, or somewhere. But I think Salvation Army has been open a little bit too. So it's just gone to wherever I can find. One time I, we drove all over the place and I, I told my husband, I said, the next stop is a dumpster. As, as bad as that sounds, it is not going back to our house. And we and thankfully at that point we found a goodwill that was open because I was like, I was almost shaking the thought of just throwing it in a dumpster because I knew it's good stuff. It's stuff I could sell if I thought I would have the time and energy to do it. And a lot of what Jess has taught is that your time is 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 valuable and it's and it's not renewable. And you can always make more money. I know that there's, you know, there's, there's some like, uh, you know, like this is worth something. I should get something for it. I paid something for it. The money you paid is gone. You made that investment. You chose to spend the money on that. It's now gone. And whatever you do with the item now is, is really up to you. I mean, you can either donate it or, or spend a ton of time and decide if it's worth your time to sell it. But for me, it wasn't worth it. Even the bunk beds, <laughs> they were really cool. I, I, I hung on to them, even though I knew we would never use them. I thought, surely I will find somebody that will need them. And I don't have friends that have little kids. I have friends that have grandkids, but they don't really want bunk beds. Anyway, it was like, it, it was becoming like more of a hassle for me to even think about what to do with the bunk bed. So I just decided we're just going to, we're just going to donate it to Salvation Army. And they came and picked it up. Um, but it was, you know, that was hard because it was also my kid's childhood. You know, it had a tent and a slide and it was fun. And I, you know, I have lots of memories with it, but, and kind of wanted it for grandkids. But I was like, Jess taught me we're not there. That's not the stage of life we're in. <laughs> so don't save it for that. So. Well, ironically, Marie has been saving stuff for her kids when they get apartments for so long. And a lot of your resistance this process has been well they're about to get apartments <laughs> so do you want to talk through that a little bit like how your thinking has shifted around that and you know where you are with all that i think mainly it's it's just my house is in a storage unit i mean that's just basically what it came down to and they're probably not going to want some of the stuff that i've been saving for them so I've, now that they've been here i've been asking and some of it they don't want and so it's gone you know um i think it was just um, the thought that a lot of the cost and a lot of the burden of getting them into an apartment is going to be on us. And so I thought, well, if I can save some stuff and not have to, you know, buy everything, all the furniture and all the kitchen stuff and all the, that, 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 that'll save us, you know, some money and get them started. But 
even with like going to college, they didn't want a lot of the stuff that, that I thought they'd take to college, you know, I'm like, why is your room still totally full? And you just left for college, <laughs> you know? So, you know, so I think it was just a mindset of just knowing they're probably not going to want a lot of what I think I've saved for them. I've saved it for me thinking, Oh, I want to, I want to, you know, give them this gift. And it's like that, you know, my son, for one thing, is pretty much a minimalist, so he probably doesn't want hardly anything. <laughs> so, so Marie, that's really interesting. So you say you what you've recognized is that you were saving it for you, not for them, and also that when you joined Clutter Boss Academy, it was really for you and not for anyone else. And I hear so often from people like, "Oh, I I really can't commit to that because you know X, Y, or Z." And I often think like, how much do we, how much time and money do we spend on all this other stuff that we feel is so justifiable? But then when there's like the one thing that actually is going to make a huge difference, it's so hard to stand up and say, I'm ready to invest in myself. Can you talk right. about your thought process around that a little bit? Because you really did this for you right from the beginning. Right. Um, yeah. Well, first of all, through boot camp, I realized sadly, <laughs> that I probably saved almost the cost of Clutter Boss Academy. It, you know, if I when, I when I thought about what I saved in a week and that that was going to continue, I thought it's going to pay for itself. And so I, it didn't feel like it, it didn't feel like a big cost. It felt like, you know, honestly, it felt like, well, she deserves to be paid for the skills that she's given me and she's going to support me and she's going to give me all of these other coaches. I mean, when I looked at the whole thing and I mean, and believe me, we looked at it and my husband and I looked at it and it was like, and like you said on your live the other day, it, it doesn't exist anywhere. This does not exist. And the fact that we can get a health coach and a mindset coach and a, you know, you know, all the coaches, you know, it, it's just a great investment. And so to me, I felt like I was worth it. I felt like I, I deserve to have all those tools. And, and, and I saw because of, of bootcamp week, um, that I valued those tools, you know, that, that, that I really got value out of, you know, and I, and then I couldn't believe how cheap your <laughs> bootcamp week was, but, <laughs> but I mean, in, in, in retrospect, I'm like, it's brilliant because you show everybody you and people invest in you, you know? And so to me, I, I was mean, like, how else can you possibly like, do I like, you know, like you have to, you have to show up for people if you want them to show up for you. Right. And you like, do. And, and yeah, it's just a great, it's just a great, a great program. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I had another question for you, but now I forgot what it was. <laughs> um, Amy says you're a coach's dream. You are. a <laughs> So Marie, how can any, any other final thoughts, like how your life has changed since joining Clutter Boss Academy or how your home has changed, or if people are thinking about doing this and they're on the fence, like what advice would you give them? What advice would you give people in general? Well, I would say, you know, for me, I knew that I, you have to know you, you have to like really dig deep and figure out what do you need? What kind of support do you need? And then ask for it because that's what I had to do. I had to say, I don't feel like I ha there's accountability. You know, there is people get account of accountability, but for me, I needed to be more tangible. So I would say if you're thinking about whether, if you're thinking about doing it, you just did boot camp. I assume a lot of people on here have done boot camp. Maybe everybody, um, yeah. you saw how Jess shows up, how she is there. She's encouraging. She's happy. She's, you know, I, to me, it's just, it's, it's a breath of fresh air. You know, it's, it, it is. I mean, it sounds so corny, but you know, it, to me, like, I really do say, I mean, like I get on calls a lot and I'm like, those are my people. I want to be there for them. I, they're there for me. Um, you know, we share everything about our lives and it's in a private group. It's not going to be repeated. You know, I, I, I just feel very safe there. And, and, you know, I just think, it's an investment in yourself and, and there's a time limit to it. So it, you don't have to continue. Most of the people I know are, are lifers. We do continue <laughs> because it becomes your place and your and, and, and for me, I'm not going to be done for a while. You know, I, I'm hoping I'm next January's um, video. 
but you know, I mean, if I'm not, then there's always the next, you know, later. So, <clears throat> but I would say, you know, my, my thing was be accountable and be find accountability and be consistent. I did that. I found people to keep me grounded in this, to keep me wanting to come back for more, to, you know, to, to keep me, you know, consistent, consistently posting and, and, and I shared with my friends outside of like, they have no, they, their houses are, most of my friends' houses do not look like, like mine, sadly. <laughs> well, yay for them, but it always <laughs> made me feel terrible. So none of them really feel the need to be in a clutter academy, you know, but they're very supportive of me because I shared with them that I was in this and they were so proud of me. And they and, and for Christmas, they got me like gift cards to restaurants and stuff like that. And stuff. they said, I don't want to clutter your home. I'm like, this is perfect. You know? And, and for us, we shopped very differently. You know, we, we got experiences. We got my son tickets to a bowl game, which we wouldn't, wouldn't have done before, you know? And, and, you know, I told my kids ask for, consumable stuff my girls asked for makeup you know, it just it was just a different experience before it was all about just stuff and and this time it was about think about what you what you want that that's going to enhance your life that's not going to add clutter so it's just it's changed everything about how we think and we can sit in our living room and be oh this is nice you know and instead of tripping over stuff or you know running into stuff stubbing toes and and you know hit you know it's just, it's a different, it's so different. It's just, it's awesome, you know, and it's not even close to done, but it's so much better, you know, and, and I think I've shared that. I know I've shared that, that there's so many places in my house that are so much better that I haven't taken that time to finish it, you know, cause it's, cause I'm, I've got other things that just seem so much more chaotic and, and I need to get to that first. But I mean, Jess has told me, you know, let's try to finish. So I am trying to finish one area in particular, just so I have a finished area, you know, but to me, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. It's all so much better that, that I don't care that, that everything's not totally finished. It, it will be. I know that. It will be. It, it will, will be. be. So you have a goal. Of of no doubt you're going to get that goal. <laughs> you no. are absolutely a dream to coach. It is so true. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I just, I want to say thank you so much, Marie. I know that this interview was slightly outside of your comfort zone. And I, I'm just so grateful that you have shared so much with us and inspired so many people. And just, you're like a pillar in the community. Now. <laughs> thank you. And it's, it's incredible to me to see, to see the change in you over, over really six months. I mean, you're like a completely different person today. Somebody in the comments said, I remember in the beginning of Claire Boss Academy, you didn't even like to turn on your camera. Now no. you're doing an interview. <laughs> yeah. I decided when I joined Clutter Boss that I was going to turn my camera on. Like I decided like, what, cause, cause I did a lot in, in boot camp, and I decided I'm going to turn my camera on every day. If you say my name, I will turn my mic like ever. Like if you go, Marie, <laughs> do you want to share? I will share. I just decided I'm not going to be, you know, no, not today, not me. You know, I'm not always going to share if other people, you know, I try to, I try to let the little Jeopardy song go for a little bit, you know, <laughs> in my head, like when she says, anybody want to share, I can always share, but, but I, but I love hearing everybody else and letting everybody else share. Um, but I will share if, if nobody's going to, so, you know, but that, that was not the old me, <laughs> but I just decided if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do, I'm going to do it all in, all in. And so, you know, it's, it's changed my life. It has absolutely changed my life. So somebody is asking what percentage done do you think you're at now, Marie? Oh, <laughs> uh, maybe 50, but the, uh, but the other 50 is hard. You know, I, the, the, the easy 50 is done. Um, <laughs> You know, I mean, even now, like, I, you know, I, I've, I've made the commitment to do a box a day, but there are days that the box may take me an hour because I'm like, uh, it's stuff I don't, you know, and, and, but then I have to just get in my head. You know, I ask myself the questions, does this meet my life today? Does this, does, do I, will I ever use it again? Um, just different questions that I ask myself, like, why are you holding on to this? You know? Um, and then that makes it easier. And I, and I do get my box, you know, but I, you know, I'm human, <laughs> you know, I, 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 there's stuff that I just, you know, I look around and I'm like, how did, how can it be hard to get a box? But it is, <laughs> it is sometimes, 
You know, I have a really good friend who, who takes stuff. She's always taking stuff to Goodwill, a box every month or two, you know, and I always thought, oh, that's interesting. You know, like, but she, <laughs> she, I guess, you know, wanted to declutter her house a little bit. It never dawned on me when she was doing that. Oh, I should do that. I've got tons of stuff I can donate. It never <laughs> even dawned on me. And now it's like, that can go, that can go, that can go. You know, now I'm, I tend to ask, you know, why are you in my house? Instead of, you know, you know, why do I, anyway, I just, I, I see stuff now and I'm like, why am I hanging on to that? Well, you find the right questions to ask. You do. You yeah. Do. You're That's different it. for everyone, but. Sure. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Are there any more questions for Marie? Heather says, I always love it when Marie shares on our calls. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and Amy says, you get the most out of it when you go all in. Exactly. Absolutely. Right. Um, wondering if I missed any questions. <laughs> it's donationtown.org. So there's that's the one. Right. Um, all right. It doesn't look like we have any more questions, but you can always tag Marie in a post if you have any questions. Or if you want to get rid of a box a day, tag Marie in a post. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she would love to see it. And I can't wait, Marie, at the end of this to do like a whole screenshot of all your boxes. I know. Right? Well, that's what I've been saving. That's one of the things that I have to do every day is like I move it into the, the January folder, the February folder. You know, like I move it into a folder so they're all in folders so that I can do screenshots. So, yeah. Well, he's so, wondering how many trumpets you have in your house. <laughs> Uh, four or five. <laughs> both, all three of us, my girls, both my girls and I play trumpet and then I teach trumpet. So I have a piccolo trumpet and a cornet and a trumpet. And a, anyway, there, yeah, I have a few. <laughs> and then I have the decorative one up here. You know? Oh, and she's also wondering what size box we're talking about. A baker's box, basically. Some of them are bigger. Some of them were bigger at the beginning. Um, but I, now it's just a baker, a, a banker. You know what I mean? With the lid, mm -hmm. a baker's box. And I actually just walk around. I have them kind of spread out through my house so I can toss stuff into them as I see. And I actually have a box in my closet. And if I try something on and I don't love it, like I don't like love the way I look in it or feel in it or whatever, it goes in that box immediately. It doesn't get hung back up for the next time I go through. It just goes in that box. So that's been huge too for me because I've gotten rid of stuff that that I thought I would like or thought, you know, that, that I did like. And then I realized it doesn't make the cut, you know, I, it, I don't like the way it feels or whatever, if it's scratchy or anything, like it, I, I'm pretty picky now too. I'm like, nope, nope you don't make it. <laughs> you, well, you learn, you learn your, like what, what you love. I mean, right. and that's like, I think when you have a lot of stuff, it's like, well, maybe this is me or maybe this is me. But as you really force yourself to make those decisions, you're like, oh yeah, that's me. <laughs> yes. Yes. And, and when I did my closet at first, I think I still probably have close to 200 t-shirts, <laughs> which at some point I will, I will declutter, but I wanted to say now that I can see them all, cause so many of them are buried that now that I can see them all, which ones will I actually wear? You know, cause you know, I'm a band director. We, we, you know, I, I get tons of band shirts and my kids were all in bands. So I have a ton of like, memorabilia shirts that I made to a quilt or so. I don't know. I don't know if I want to quilt. I've gotten rid of so many. <laughs> I've gotten rid of so much the stuff like that. And I also actually also made every time I was going to get rid of a backpack, I made a bag for somebody uh, to give on the streets that, mm -hmm. that I put a blanket in and water bottles and snacks and, and other stuff, you know, toiletries from hotels, you know, just things that I had around my house that I was like, that can go in a, in a bag, you know? So I, I instead of getting. Did we lose you there, Marie? Hold on. We lost your audio. Oh, sorry. I, Wait, it's phone call. It's I had a phone call. <laughs> and, and I was like, ah. Yeah. Marie, there's actually so there's a few more questions coming in now. Um, Emily says, what does she say here? She said, uh, she said, I think I can do that somewhere, although I lost it now. Oh, yeah. I oh, good. I think I can do the box day. You can do a box a day. Marie, tell her. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. In fact, um, anybody that I, I just have like basically what I say every day, here's my men's box for the day. And men's comes from the minimalists. They, they mm -hmm. talk about counting. I hate counting. So right, really early on, I told Jess, I'm not going to count. I'll, I'll fill a box, <laughs> but I don't want to count. So, um, so I do. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I lost my train of thought. Um, so so, so I, yeah. I have everything just written in, in my notes and I can, and I'll just copy and paste. So if you would like me to tag you, so you see my post every day and then you can post yours under there, you know, 
I'm happy to tag anybody just so they can see. Oh, yeah. Because for me, it, it wasn't habit at first. And I would go, did I post my, you know, and, and I had to put reminders in my phone and stuff. Um, but now, it, if even if I forget my fa- my whole family's like, did you make your post? <laughs> so, so it's all good. Um, Heather is asking, does your family participate? Heather, we kind of talked about that in the beginning, but they they do sort of. You know, the, my husband has got once I did my closet, my side of the closet, which is like three fourths of the closet, his little fourth looked really bad. And so he went through it with me and he actually now folds his T-shirts and puts them, you know, the way, you know, just said you know, where they stand up so he can see them all. And so he had, and he pared down to one drawer worth of T-shirts. And so he 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 is all in and, he, and he's very supportive. Um, he doesn't try to get a box a day or, or try to even do that much but if we say hey let's declutter for a while he'll go around and pick up some stuff and find some stuff so so um and he's the you know the kids it is what it is you know and 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 i even tell them you know when when they leave to go back to college i'm like i told my son i said so is there anything in there that's off limits and 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 he's like no i don't think so i said would you rather i make the put the boxes and have you go through them when you get home and he's like yeah let's do that so I have permission to go in there and get rid of what I think he doesn't want anymore. And then he'll just look at it and he'll probably glance at it and say, get rid of it. So in May when he's, or in March, when he's home for spring break, we'll get rid of a bunch of boxes from his room. But um, I finally just told him, I said, when you guys are out on your own, my house is not a storage unit and, and you have plenty of room <laughs> to, to put your stuff in that you can either pare down and fit in your space. Like I'm trying to teach you to, or you can, have boxes on your floor, which is not storage space. <laughs> and so they know that when they really move out, then I want them reclaiming their room. You know, it's not going to be a storage area for their stuff. So that's an empowered mother talking. <laughs> <laughs> and they know they're welcome to come back and I will have a bed for them. But, you know, the whole like, that's my childhood room. I'm like, eh, eh, nope. <laughs> So this has been so much fun. I am so glad you wanted to do this. I'm so glad you took a chance on yourself and invested in yourself because it's been incredible to watch. Thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely. So thank you so, so much. You'll have to go back and read through the comments. You're getting a lot of comments in here. All right. Thank you guys so much for joining us. We have um, at two o'clock today, an interview with Sam and her interview is it's all clutter. She's going to talk about all the other types of clutter she's been tackling in her life through clutter boss Academy. Um, and again, if you want to join us in clutter boss Academy, now is the time make an investment in yourself, take a chance. Imagine where your life will be in six months, just like Marie. Yes. Whole new world. <laughs> So just Thank we need to do the obligatory wave. <laughs> we talked about that last night. Yeah, I love camera though. <laughs> Bye everyone. Thank you so much, Marie. Thank you.